Hello guys, welcome to today's edition of Being the Help I Needed. My name is Theophilus Lamte. For the past two weeks, we've been dealing with youth and ministry. And today we are going to continue from where we left off last week. Apostle is ready. I want to say a quick prayer and then I'll introduce Apostle and then we can go straight into today's edition. Father, we bless your name. We thank you. We give you glory. We are grateful for the hearts that are gathered here. We pray by all means that you take us out of the scene. Let your glory alone be seen. We pray for their hearts that Lord Jesus, they will be receptive. Any agent of the enemy that has been designed to be a hindrance or a blockade to the flow of your word, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We declare that your word will go like the sword in the hearts of your people. Break down every stronghold and by the end of the day, may it be said that after this broadcast, lives have never been the same. Yokes have been broken and burdens have been lifted. All to the glory of your name as you release your blessings here on earth. We love you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Beloved, you are wel welcome to today's edition. And um, yes, today promises to be extraordinary. You see, Apostle is already fired up, so you can imagine um, what we are going to be encountering today. For our regular viewers, we say welcome, and especially to those that are watching us for the first time, we say that you will never regret joining this um, edition and probably the subsequent ones that Apostle is going to help us to be bringing your way. My name again is Theophilus Lamte, and this is the Theophilus Lamte Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. But this program is that being the help I needed. We want God to use us to be the help we needed whilst we were growing up. Apostle, you want to say hello to your people, and then we will go straight into um, today's program. Hello, everyone. Shalom. It's a blessing to interact with you once again uh, by the ministry of my brother and the dear wife, uh, Minister Theophilus Lamte. I have been with you for, for the past two weeks, and um, it's wonderful interacting with you, for you sharing and commenting and, and making sure that your families are also having these um end up secrets at their disposal through the links you share through the comments you 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 you, you put on on the on the show and um, all the questions you are sending to the backstage to the man of god we really appreciate god bless all of you and thanks man of god for having me on your show again thank you very much apostle we want to go straight into um today's program um, I think we are getting to the point where we are now going to get in a lot more detail from where we left off. And you see, most times when we talk about youth um, in ministry, or today, for instance, we are going to stay more on serving God as a youth. Sometimes the young ones, we feel like serving God has to be that um, place where you are into pastoral duties or you are a deacon. But there is, I mean, there's more than that. You can serve God in your purity. You can serve God um, in, in, in faith and all of those things. And I'm sure our apostle is going to help us to uh, deal with it properly today. Apostle, so we are going to start. First off, we are going to look at some of the factors that can help the young ones to fulfill their ministry. Last week and the week before that, you helped us to appreciate and understand from the Bible's perspective that the young people have a specific assignment that God has called us to do. So we are looking at some of the factors that can help us in fulfilling that ministry so that there will not be a gap as far as um, um, fulfilling what God has called us to do is concerned. Yes, please. All right, thank you, Manogo, for having me once again. Yes, so regarding um, our position in terms of service, um, you know, even though we are interacting with human beings, but we are we are to convey service on behalf of an eternal spirit, which is God. God is spirit. And so if that is the case, then we can carry the work of God in the energy of the flesh. You see, um, Jesus, we saw him at age 12, which was customary for the young men to be brought into the, the, the temple to be examined by the doctors of the law. And Jesus, we see him interacting with the doctors and asking them serious questions. Now, we didn't hear of Jesus again until his church. And the Bible tells us that when he came into Nazareth um, in, in Luke chapter 4, specifically from the verse 16, mm. the Bible tells us that he 
came to Nazareth where he was brought up. Let me read the verse um, 16 again. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So Jesus, when we did not see him on the scene, was behind the scenes at Nazareth, Mm. developing what we call customs. Mm. The Bible says he went into the synagogue as his custom was. That's right. So all the time that we did not see him on the public scene, he was just developing what I call godly disciplines. Mm. That would be the platform for which God will empower him to serve effectively. Mm. You see? And it was when he was building these customs that he was creating room for the Holy Spirit to manifest his power through him. Mm. Don't forget, the Bible tells us that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing them that were oppressed by them, for God was with him. And in the Luke chapter 18 account, uh, chapter 4 verse 18 account, it was after he had developed these customs that he came to say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. So, as a youth, if you are going to serve effectively, Jesus should, especially if you're a Christian, Jesus should be your template. Mm. Because Jesus is the last Adam. Well, the reason why he's the last Adam is because God created Adam, the first Adam, to be the template upon which we will look and then emulate the character of God. That's right. You see? So, but Adam fell, and the only record we have of Adam in the Bible is his falling state. We never see him as to how he was interacting with the lions, interacting with Eve, interacting with God. We never saw that. All we saw was his falling and how he covered himself and later on went out of the garden. So we don't have a clear picture of how God originally wanted Adam to live. So we can learn from the first Adam. So God sent Jesus to be the the last Adam, not the second Adam, indicating that someone else will come. But the last Adam, indicating that Jesus is a perfect example of all the things that God wants us to emulate. Mm. So Jesus became the last Adam so that we can be able to appreciate exactly how God wants us to live. Mm. So Jesus becomes the template man. He becomes our standard. So the Bible says in Luke chapter, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 29, for those that God foreknew, he predestined right. that they should be conformed to the image of his son mm. so that his son will be the firstborn among many brethren. You see? So we are to conform to Jesus. No wonder Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Having said this, draw your attention to the fact that if Jesus first began by developing customs, and then that became the platform upon which the Holy Spirit will launch him into greater service, mm-hmm. then you can't do you can do otherwise. That's right. So developing customs mm-hmm. is key in effective service. What customs are you to, to develop? You see, when you check carefully, the Bible says he had a custom of going into the temple mm. and reading the scrolls. Mm. He went into the, tab- the, the, the the synagogue as his custom was. So let's start from the beginning. The act of constantly going into the community of believers who show you the ways of the Lord. That's right. No one, no one is a source. Mm. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron, so that the countenance of a friend sharpens the other. I think Proverbs 27, verse 17. Mm. So there is something that happens to you when you begin to interact with like-minded believers. Mm. Something changes in your life. Yes. And that's why the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Mm. Something happens to you. When you read um, um, some some, um, 73, Asaph was complaining about how the wicked is allowed to flourish and all that, and how the righteous goes through tri- trials and struggles. Then he made a statement. He said, 
but i understood the end of the week when i entered into the synagogue That's into right. the temple of the see there's a revelation you get about what is going on around us when you are part of the body of believers mm. see the bible said they continue in apostles doctrine in fellowship in prayer and in breaking of bread yeah. and because of that the fear of the lord increased and check carefully anytime the fear of the lord increased there was a manifestation of greater level of miracles yeah. signs and wonders that's true and the Bible says we should not stop the gathering of ourselves together, mm. as we and man and some are doing. But we should encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. Mm. So if something happens to you, the, the church is a place of finding destiny. Mm. You find destiny and purpose in the church. Mm. In the midst of believers, you find purpose. Mm. You find destiny. You see, something happens to you when you begin to work with God, and consider what the, the body of believers who are also on fire for the Lord. In fact, the psalmist says, those who love the Lord are my friends. That's right. So that's the first custom you must develop. The custom, even Jesus, being God in the flesh, mm. had the habit of going into the temple wow. to fellowship with like-minded believers. Mm. So what makes you think, even though the Pharisees were opposing him, and they were not following the right order of God. Jesus still saw the need mm. to go into the temple. Mm. The, the, you see, the, the, the church, the local church is a mystery. Mm. I don't want to go into that too much because there are a lot of disciplines and customs we must tackle. Yes, sir. But if you check the Bible carefully, the idea of building God a physical temple, a physical place, was instituted by David. Mm. Where did he get the idea? In fact, when he said that God, not that God was surprised, they say, but God was shocked that David was able to buy into his civilization to get that wisdom, to know that God, God, God can have a place and mm. we can build God a temple. Mm. God was amazed that the man was able to, God could not imagine how David had grown all this while. It's like, <laughs> you, 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 you bought a car, and um you know you travel but you needed someone to pick the keys and drive the car and your son is 18 years but you you've never imagined that he can drive yeah and then suddenly there's an emergency and your your, your son takes a proactive measure to take the person to the hospital mm. by driving mm. and you are wondering how how did you know how to drive when <laughs> <laughs> that is what happened and that's what god did to uh, adam when he he, he he fell in the garden mm. adam where are you god wasn't asking him to know where he is per se god wanted adam to know that his location in him has changed yeah. the bible says if you are lukewarm i'll vomit you out of your mind the actual revelation is not just the vomiting you out of your mind the actual revelation is that you are already in him you can't vomit what is outside you out mm -hmm. if something is wrong inside you can't vomit it out That's right. so the idea of god saying jesus saying i'll vomit you out because you're already in and there's a temp temperature in him you must maintain mm. and if you don't maintain that temperature the only option is for, for him to vomit you out actual revelation mm. you see now back to what i'm saying if i'm going to tell you so maybe had the idea and it came out of intimacy mm. when we are intimate with the lord we begin to have revelations of the lord in different measures mm. so what i'm trying to say that the, the local church is not a building person even though the building was a revelation but human being ultimately is the temple of god and as we gather with one another we are able to lighten up ourselves then a second custom i will bring to bear is building the atmosphere of spiritual consciousness mm. now i have to illustrate you how practical this is yes. you see you don't have to be a pastor you don't have to be a bishop or whoever before you can build this custom or become effective in service because you see in those days in acts chapter um chapter nine we saw one man called ananias the bible makes it clear that was disciple disciple and in those days church members were seen as disciples you see normal church members were seen as disciples and so this guy 
had grown in the spirit to the extent that Jesus himself appeared to him and said, listen, hey, I want you to go and talk to this guy and pray for him. Mm. I want you to go and pray for Saul. So you can become effective to the extent that Jesus himself can appear to you, even though you're a protocol member, you are instrumentalist mm -hmm. you can build capacity in your service of god that jesus can appear to you That's and right. it must begin by building spiritual consciousness mm. knowing that you have been translated from this kind of world that you are part of a spiritual family mm. that consciousness is so important to understand that the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 4 to 9 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh mm. but they that that are after the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against god mm. for it is not subject to the law of god That's neither right. indeed can be mm. so then they that are in the flesh cannot please god but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Mm. So you are you are not of this flesh. Even if this flesh is giving prompts, ideas, suggestions, you are not this flesh. Mm. Understand that Jesus knew that this work of service is not a carnal service. Mm. And that's why when you went, the Bible said you found a place that is written, the Spirit of God is upon me. He was spiritually attuned, so he was able to decipher where the Spirit of God is. Mm. And the Bible tells us um, in um, Romans chapter 14, verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's right. So you must be so attuned with the Spirit and function on that spiritual plane that when the Holy Spirit whispers in your service, you can know. So that spiritual consciousness is so important in your service of God. You can be saying, oh, oh, um, these are the calls. If you are playing keyboard, these are the calls I can play for God to move in the church. But meanwhile, that's not a call that the Holy Spirit at that time wants to use. Mm -hmm. And if you are true with the Spirit, you are spiritually conscious, you see that you play a call that the pastor who is meditating on what to preach will study be stirred up by revelation and give the right utterance. That's right. People of God, if you are going to be effective, you can't go ahead of the Holy Spirit. You can't limit your 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 service to just the physical environment and physical activity. Many people are exhausted in their service of God because they are limiting it to the physical activities. Mm. True service is one that is coordinated by God. The Bible says for uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, for we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and do not glory in the flesh That's right. god is looking for those who can worship him in spirit and in truth and every act of service is an act of worship mm. so you must make sure that your service is carried on the wings of the holy spirit mm. so build spiritual consciousness the bible says um in revelation chapter 1 verse, verse 10 i was in the spirit on the lost day mm. and i heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet mm. if you are not attuned to the holy spirit you cannot be able to offer appropriate service wow. so spiritual control the habit of going into the temple mm. as in uh, gathering of the same being part of the church fellowship with like-minded believers mm. the the custom of building spiritual consciousness always occupying yourself with spiritual things mm. The songs you listen to are very important. Mm -hmm. If you are serving God, if you are going to serve God effectively, you must be selective in the songs you listen to. Because it can wear, it wear down your anointing that is needed to serve if you listen to the wrong music. That's true. You know, so very important. Then, um, the, the third custom that I'll bring to bear is the custom of constant reading of the Bible. Mm. You see, the more ancient the discipline, the more effective. And this custom of reading the Bible is it is is cardinal, so cardinal. Mm. You want to serve God, but you don't know His word. You don't know His mind. Mm. Listen, when Jesus was tempted by the devil, he quote the words that Jesus quoted in defeating the enemy during the temptation, Luke chapter four and Matthew chapter four, wearing his own words. That's true. He was quoting the book of Deuteronomy. Mm. 
Jesus was quote, quoting the, the book of Deuteronomy and Satan recognized that the book of Deuteronomy, which is the word of God, is such powerful that he cannot resist, withstand it. So even Jesus quoted the Bible. Mm. So if you don't read the Bible as a custom, you cannot be effective in serving God. That's right. Satan will make the Bible say he, even Jesus after defeating Satan, the Bible says he left him for a season. For a season. Even Jesus, he left him for a season. So in your service to God, Satan will come again and again and again to tempt you, to harass you, to stop your work of service, to carry the work in the energy of the flesh. He will torment you. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be effective, you have to have a custom of reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. By so do you see the mind of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible is God's emotion, God's will, God's intellect, written in human language for our perception. Mm -hmm. See, so have a custom of constant reading of the Bible. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And Jesus says, the words I speak to unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. The life and the spirit you need to carry out the work of service is in the word of God. That's right. It's in the word. And there are two things that the word of the Lord will do to you. Let me, let, let me, let me, uh, first of all, let me, let me mention two things that the word of the Lord will do yes, to you. Sir. First of all, life, life flows through the word of the Lord. Mm. Life. Jesus says in, in John chapter 15, verse 5 to 7, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm. For without me, ye can do nothing. Mm. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch mm. and is withered. Mm. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. And it shall be done unto you. How do you abide in Jesus? Through the word. Jesus is the word. Mm -hmm. the, you're, you're, you're in him in, in, by confessing as the Lord, the person said, yeah. but organically, you are abiding in by his thing on the word. Mm -hmm. Something happens to you when you constantly read your Bible. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that there are many, many church leaders, people making decisions for churches who have not read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Wow. The question is, on what account are you making those decisions? Mm -hmm. On what account are you leading the people of God? Mm. On what account are you leading them? So please, it's not a joke. Life flows from the word. And the Bible, Jesus, and the words I speak, they contain life, life and spirit. Mm. Secondly, the word is a, is, sorry, the cleansing is in the word of the Lord. The cleansing of, that you will need daily to be effective is in the word. You see, as we go through this world and encounter people, we become defiled day by day. Mm. In those days, you know, in fact, when Jesus was uh, washing the, the feet of the disciples um, in John chapter 13, um, Peter said, listen, Lord, I don't want you to wash my feet. Mm. And Jesus said, hey, if I don't wash your feet, you don't have any part of me. That's right. Then he said, then Lord, wash my whole body. <laughs> 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 then Jesus made the statement. He said in the verse, in the verse 10, Jesus said to him, He that is washed needed not save to wash his feet, mm. but is clean every is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Mm. What Jesus is trying to say in those days, they walk on the desert a lot, and because of the dust, usually their feet are dead. Mm. So um they they have this water pitcher mm. uh, beside their door mm. where if a person is coming into the house and wants to enter the room, we'll have to wash their, their feet. And Jesus was using that as an analogy. Okay. The cleansing of the feet. You see, when you are born again, you are already washed. Mm. You are already baptized into Christ. Mm. You don't have to be born again and again and again. What you need is a daily cleansing of your feet. Okay. Why? Because as you go through life, your feet become dirty by the dust of the wrong music you listen to, mm. by the wrong conversation you engage, by the wrong movie you watch. These things defy you spiritually. Wow. That is how can you see, for instance, joy, kindness, self-control, faithful. These are all characteristics of God's life. Mm. See, 
in our world, those who cannot practice that life are usually in prison. Wow. Those who murder, murder is not the characteristic of God's life. No. That means that if a person is murdering, it means that that person is lacking an expression of God's life. So the person must be in prison in our world. Yes. And once you have the life of God, you, the child of God, has the ability to express yourself in these dimensions of God's life. Mm. And you know, on daily basis, as we interact with the world, the defilement we receive siphons this expression of God's life in us. Mm. So you, for instance, you are easily angered. You are serving God all right, but you are easily angry. Mm. You are bitter. You are envious. You are jealous. It means that your feet has become dirty and you are not washing it. Wow. And that word, that, what the water that you use to wash your feet is the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, 26, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. That's true. So the water, in those days in the time that they had a, a water, see, that they used to wash their feet before they, they go wash themselves, before they, they, they serve. Mm. And daily, daily, you must wash your feet with the word of God. Mm. If you don't do that, you can be easily angered. Something, a statement somebody made will easily get to you and you, you want to stop serving. Mm. Yes, it's because your feet is dirty. Mm. But when you allow the word to wash you, what somebody will say will not even bother you. Mm. Yes. So that is the custom of the word. And then, um, the, I think the, um, the fourth point, I think, is a custom of prayer. Mm. It's a custom of prayer. Mm. You see, sometimes we are looking for 10 points to become effective in service. And then we ignore you know, all these disciplines. But the truth of the matter is that these are the things that the Bible people, the Bible characters did. These are the things they engaged themselves and they became effective. Wow. <laughs> So it's not about, oh, if you want to be effective, wear this, wear that. It, it is good, but they are all outward. That's There's true. an inner life that sustains our service to God. Mm. And if that inner life is not stirred through constant engagement of some of this cardinal discipline in scripture, trust me, all of you will be sure of. Mm. Later on, you realize that your service is becoming more harmful. Mm. And anything that does not have the organic move of the spirit can later on bring death to people. It can bring death to people. Mm. You see, so the custom of prayer, if you check through the Bible, Jesus will wake up a great while before day and go and pray. Mm. And then when it's daytime, he will go and serve the people of God. Mm. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. In the book of Luke chapter um, 6, verse 12, he spent the whole night in prayer. Mm. You want to be effective in serving as an usher, but you don't pray. Because you think that that awesome way doesn't deserve prayer. <laughs> but you see, you are serving people who are carrying all manner of spirits. Wow. The man said, I brought my daughter and the disciples could not help. Mm. But when Jesus had ascend, descended from the temple and a place of encounter, a place of prayer. In fact, the Bible said when he was praying, the fashion of his countenance changed. Mm. I think Luke chapter 9 verse 29, his appearance began to be altered. And when he came down, he was able to cast out devils and all that. Sometimes, even handshake of somebody in, in your service can bring deliverance to that person. Wow. Yes. So prayer is a discipline you must develop if you want to be an effective servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you want to be effective in serving God, you have to be prayerful. You have to be prayerful. God instructed. And you see, the kind of prayer that brings, let me let me just um, say this so that you come in. Yes. Um, now, the kind of prayer that brings results to be effective is a scheduled prayer. Mm. Where you schedule yourself, you have a particular time you pray in the day. Mm. You see, you can pray randomly. The Bible says we should pray with that season. That is fine. But the truth of the matter is that God told Aaron, Moses to tell Aaron, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all times into the, the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Now, the death there represents the, 
the holiness of God breaking forth against man because he's sinful. Now, Jesus has taken the dead part away. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is that we can pray randomly and at all times, but if you want to have encounters, if you want to have encounters and have a place where God can minister to you certain precious things in your course of service, you have to develop a custom of having specific time for prayer. Yes. Jesus did it all the time. We have Christians who pray randomly and then they think that is enough. It's not. Mm. Five particular time. You, you feel like, try this and see. Mm. Let's say one hour. Maybe it's 8, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, 8 p.m. to 9, 9 p.m. Or in the morning, maybe 5 to uh, 6. Do that every day mm. and see the results. I'm telling you, the kind of grace that will be released upon you, you'll be so amazed. Man of God, I will hand over to you. Yes, sir, Apostle. You see, I, I, I'm, I was just quiet and I'm just enjoying the way you were systematically um, dealing with it. And, and I'm learning a lot. The part about the prayer that we need to have a fixed time. You see, sometimes like we just um, joke around with it and say, oh, I can just get up and pray anytime. But I, I like the way you hinted on it that the, the, the set time that you do it over and over again. And it also ties into the fact that it becomes a custom. So you see, your first point is classic, and as you were explaining the prayer, the custom bit is so important. And I also wanted to add to the fact that this world we live in is a legalistic world. It's, it's full of spirits, and spirits are like lawyers if they become human. So they deal with details and specifics. So if you don't have a custom, you cannot function where spirits are being talked about. So the custom is very, very important. So then you also mentioned the fact that you need to sustain a spiritual consciousness. Most of us um, take it for granted. So the reason why the devil is influencing the whole world and especially our generation with all these um, songs that are going to create immorality is because he wants to sow seeds into our soul. So then our spiritual consciousness gets, gets weakened. Because you see, there is a level we need to get to as far as our knowledge of Christ is the, the focal point. That we can be able to draw things from God. So there was a point when Jesus encountered a man and the man had no faith. And Jesus said, it's not what I can do, it's what you believe. And the man at that point, like you said, needed spiritual consciousness of the personality of Christ to be able to draw from him. So the man realized that, no, I'm at, I'm at fault. So immediately he said, Lord, heal my unbelief. Because that medicine you are going to give me by praying and healing my unbelief is going to shoot me into that spiritual consciousness where I will be at par to be able to draw from you. So there is a, a frequency that we need to align so that whatever God is transmitting to us will be able to come. So if I'm trying to just divulge um what you were saying about spiritual consciousness a little bit to um our day-to-day -day activity i'll say it's like a radio a, a, a radio station that operates on a frequency you, you might have the radio set you might have all the um tuning knobs and everything but if you are not able to tune to fall onto that frequency although that um, radio station is broadcasting in the airwaves you have the equipment probably a very high-tech equipment but until you get the frequency you will not be able to get what they are transmitting yes. So I think that is what the youth we are lacking and it's, it's just a blessing for me that we have to work on it. God is available. We have the Holy Spirit available. We received Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. But are we tuning the frequency well? And part of the things that you, you, you told us now are some of the things that we need to use to tune the frequency. The prayer. The, 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 the scheduled prayers. So you see that any time is 4 o'clock, which is your time that you commune with God, you begin to speak. Man, daily, bo, sika, ba, yabranda, ba. You are tuning the frequency. There is a realm you get to then. You see that things are beginning to flow from heaven because you've hit the mark. So then you, be, yes. you, just, you just relax and you are downloading. Apostle, I think that is one of the challenges we have. And I'm not an exemption. I am part of it. Because sometimes I'll have um, 
a scheduled time that I wake up and I pray. And then other times I'll be like, oh, I can just pray during the day. Maybe if I'm even going to pick my wife, then I'll just pray like on the way because I've kind of engaged myself with other things. But I, I can bear witness that if I do my consistent prayers, like the times that I've kept to pray, any time I get up that time to pray, I feel an ambience. There is some, there is some presence that I encounter when I do that consistent time prayer. So God bless you so much for um, allowing yourself for God to use you to speak to me. This one is not for anybody. This one is for me. So I have taken no, this no, one. No, no, yes, sir. Man of God, um, let me even chip in this. You yes, see, sir. spirits mm. are very particular about faithfulness, trust, mm. and consistency. Wow. Whenever they see the fragrance of consistency, they think it's an it's an invitation into a covenant. Okay. The whole idea of covenant is to secure the faithfulness of men. Mm. Faithfulness is so important in spirit civilization to the extent that at the end of everything we do for God, God will say good and faithful servants. Mm. 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 And the whole idea is that spirits are legalistic beings. Mm. And when they are interacting with men, that is number one problem they have. Men cannot be faithful because of this flesh. So when you begin to build a custom of faithfulness and consistency, if it is towards the Holy Spirit, he knows you are securing a covenant. Mm. Yes. That's how come, like you said, when it is time for prayer, suddenly you feel that something has rested upon you. That's true. Consistency attracts the spirit dimension of the discipline you are engaged in. Mm. Mm. When you are consistent, you begin, and it cut across consistency in your giving. Somebody was asking me, you know, men of God have been preaching about having an altar or Satan having altars and altars fighting us and all that. They are simply consistency mm. that men have lifted. Mm. It could be. Maybe when we talk about an altar and an evil altar in the house, so altar is simply um, a point at the airport. Let me say the airport of spirits. Okay. When so spirit, where they take when off spirit, and where they alight. Exactly. Mm. When when spirits see consistency, they see it as an airport. Okay. Yes. So there are people in your bloodline who were consistent in offering a particular spirit some sacrifices mm. and that sacrifices those sacrifices sorry attracted these spirits to take flight and to land in that aspect of your family okay. when that service is not carried on again that spirit will now because satan doesn't have any good thing to offer will now try to establish its character in the lives of the people mm. it can be alcoholism it can be anything because there is no consistency to service it again. Mm. So when we talk about evil altar mm. and witchcraft, it's simply men in the family who are servicing certain spirits or creating a platform for certain spirits to take off and to land consistently. Wow. Yes. So that's the whole idea of building a personal altar. Mm. When you have a consistent prayer life, when you have a consistent giving like the whole idea is oh I have been given uh, and so let me I'm stopping. No, you see when you when you do that, you, you are not trustworthy. Mm. You can't attract spiritual things randomly. You you must be so consistent to the standard. The legal world in the spirit realm will know that no, no, this this person deserves it. Mm. What attracted God to Abraham is, is that Abraham in the midst of idol worship, was seeking for something greater. Okay. So when God came, God was searching for men who would believe in him and uh, men that he can trade with. Mm. And the only person he could find at that time was Abraham. Mm. Abraham is the only person that dedicated his life and said, God, use me. You see? So consistency created a platform. Those in the occultic world you can't do today's sacrifice and stop tomorrow and then do that. They will kill you. Yeah. You don't do it like that. Yeah. God was teaching me the, the, the mystery of blood money. Hmm. When we talk about money rituals, God was teaching me the whole secret is that everyone is blessed by God. Hmm. The money that you will be 
getting and when you sacrifice and all that, it's not something that Satan gives you per se. It's something that God already gave you. But God has set times and season for everything he has given you. Mm. So when you go and sleep in those coffees and drink all those concussion, the Bible says whoever breathes the hedge, a serpent will bite. God has set a natural boundary over every man. That's why Satan cannot just kill anybody random. Yeah. But when you go and take these concussions and drink those things and sleep in cup, you are giving Satan the permission to break those hedge. Mm. Okay? To take lay hold on God's resources in you and fast track them into manifestation. Mm. That's why they give you time limit to leave. Mm. Because Satan has compressed everything that God would have given you into a short season. Mm. So that when you die, even though everything has been fast tracked, but in the side of God, you have not maximized your full potential. That's true. And it's one of the things you give an account of. Mm. Mm. So Satan will compress everything and give you a, a short time limit to live. Once you die, he will bring all those things that you did not use back to you. Mm. And then you stand on the day of judgment to give an account. Why did he, you didn't use those things? Mm. So Satan doesn't really have anything to give. He utilizes what God has deposited in you. If you check carefully, those fetish people who do money ritual, when they know that a person will be prosperous, they know. Yeah. When they see, when they see that this yeah. person, if he, he he does this blood money to work, they know. <laughs> <laughs> and they know that they know those that it cannot work. Mm. And the whole idea is that God has already blessed you. So rituals, customs. Are integral when you begin to do this people will think you are being religious or legalistic mm. but you see grace grace is given to every child of god as a seed but it can multiply That's true. peter said grace and peace be multiply, multiply. unto you yeah. oh, and and when you when you check the bible carefully the bible said um <laughs> according as god his divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness mm. Through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and to virtue. Mm. So God has given us all things we need for life and godliness, but it can it can manifest mm. or take residence in our lives through the discipline of him, the knowledge of him. That's right. See, so the discipline of the word multiply. Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you and to give you an inheritance. That's true. So the discipline of the word has the inheritance. It commits you. We will say, oh, but we are all born under grace. Why should I commit myself to the discipline of reading the Bible? The grace of God will do it. But you see, grace is given to you by a multiple. If you are going to serve in an area, you need a level of grace in that area. Mm. No child of God is devoid of wisdom, for instance. Mm. The Bible says Christ has become unto us wisdom from God. Mm. You see, First Corinthians, I think, chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 30 and 31. God, Jesus has become unto us wisdom from God. However, James says, if anyone lack wisdom, ask. let him ask of the Lord. What does it mean? If Jesus is my wisdom, how then do I lack right, wisdom? Yeah. So we must we must interpret it well in context. Now, it means that once you are in Christ, Jesus, his spirit in you is the embodiment of every wisdom you need. However, you can open, your, for instance, your door for me into your room and say, sleep in my room. Don't go to the restroom. Don't go to my kitchen. Don't go to my living room. I am bound to your room. That's true. I can only express myself in your room. Mm. But the day you open every aspect of your room to me, I, I can be able to enter there and then find expression. That's right. It's the same with the wisdom and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm. The wisdom of God is in you, but in the area of finances, you are not subscribed to God's knowledge concerning finance. So there's lacking of wisdom in that area. Mm. You see? So I think I need to wrap up and bring it to the discipline. Otherwise, I'll, I'll be carried away. So the whole issue is that you must build a custom, custom that enriches you, that gives a platform for the Holy Spirit to move, to manifest in His power in your life. Man of God, I think I will end here so that you can add your 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 take on it. Yes, sir. So I'll I'll just say my take, and then um I'll you just take a few minutes to kind of um sum it up, and then we will get ready for the second part where. Uh, is going to be practical demonstrations of serving God as a youth. We'll take some lessons from the Bible, biblical examples of people that served God. 
whilst they were young people. And Apostle, the other time I was also trying to, I was supposed to speak on a, a topic, the armor of God. And as I started to learn it, I realized that the Spirit of God started to open some areas to me that I have not paid attention to probably, I, so I would say revelation. So you see the part where, so then is Ephesians chapter 6, as we all know from the 10 all the way, it talks about the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. But where the, my lesson actually came from was, it said, for the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So the more of the word of God you know, it gives you an offensive advantage against the enemy. Yes. So when you were talking about the fact that we need to dive, sleep, eat, chew the word, because even Jesus, who was the word in human form, needed to quote the word. Yes. So then how much more um, you and I who are believers. So as I was reading, then it made me understand that a believer who does not dive deep into the word in terms of reading, studying, and meditation, you become impotent as far as attacking the enemy is concerned. And those of us who like sports a little bit, we know that no matter how good a team is, if you are only defensive-minded, your opponents will begin to wear you out at a point in time because they keep mounting pressure on you. So it's advisable for you to be offensive as well so that they will also struggle to begin to defend themselves and you will also take a little space to cool down. So this is where the lesson came from. If the sword of the spirit is the word of God, that means the more of the word of God um, I put in my spirit, I get a sword. And if you know about movies, you know you know that sword is that sharp edge, that kind of thin blade that we used to fight. But look at what God was telling me. Then he said, we have the shield of faith. And we know that the foundation of the Christian journey or the Christian walk is on faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And if we look at the whole strata of the armor of God, the shield is the only one that is movable. It does not have a specific location, unlike the others, where the helmet cannot fit anywhere else, the, the breastplate cannot fit anywhere else, the belt cannot go anywhere, the shoe cannot um, be able to move to another place. But we see that aside the sword, which is offensive, that can be used to fight, the shield which has a relatively bigger surface area has a connection with the word of god as well so god was asking me the question he said how can they hear unless somebody speaks to them or unless somebody preaches the word of god because he said faith cometh by hearing and by hearing what the word of god so then God was telling me that, young man, the same word which when you read and meditate becomes your sword, the deeper or furthermore you do studies or business with the word of God, you begin to get a lot more raw materials to build your shield, which is the faith. Yes. So we don't end at just using the word as a sword to fight. But the more we go, the further down we go in journey with the word of God, we are able to manufacture the shield of faith. And that is how we are able to ward off the fiery darts of the enemy. And he said that the shield can be used to block any loopholes in the body. You see, the helmet has small holes so that you'll be able to see whilst you are fighting. So if you are fighting against a very skillful um, enemy, he can shoot an arrow and it will enter your eyes, although you are wearing a helmet. But the shield is what you can use to move around and block your eye when the, so the, the, the dagger is coming towards your eye. Even your, yes. your breastplate, it's not every side that is covered. Your, 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 your belt, there are loopholes. So without that shield of faith, the devil will still be able to hit you. Why is it that the Bible said the fiery darts or the fiery arrows? Because arrows, you don't fight with arrows face to face. Arrows are shot from afar when you don't know or you don't see. So these are unexpected um, attacking systems that the enemy can use. But it is the shield that will be able to help you. So the way you emphasize on the word of God cannot be underrated. We don't have any chance against this devil if we are not the word addicts. Because there is so much flying during the day and during the night, it will take the shield of faith 
to be able to resist it. So we have a lot of young people who are put on all the armor, but to be able to get the shield is a problem because we don't read the word. Yes. You see, so it's not enough to have the word to attack. You need more of the word to build a shield. And finally, uh, yes, sir. Carefully, mm. all the all the um the the, 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 ammo, the weapons the armor is the word the shield of faith mm. helmet of salvation mm. the belt of truth mm. breastplate of righteousness yeah. how do you get all these things to the, the word. word of God the word <laughs> you can't work in righteousness if you don't understand the the the, 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 the boundaries of God's word that's right and so it's it's all about that that's right that's right so then finally he said that. As young people, as long as you come into the fold of Christ, you see that the armor that was described does not have a place behind you. It doesn't cover your backside. What it means is that when you enter into the Christian dome, it is forward ever. That's why he likened us to soldiers. No soldier goes to the battle with the intention of running away. It is two things. Either I am defeated and I die or I overcome my enemy and I take new territories. So that is the mindset we need to sustain as young people. When we come into the fold of God, we don't have that liberty to say we are. The moment you turn back as a soldier with that armor, you turn back, an arrow will hit you from behind. So we need to know that it is forward ever and backwards never. Man of God, you want to just wrap up um, for us uh, and then we will see where God will take us um, from there. Based on all the five points that you've you've the spiritual consciousness the the community going into having a custom and i realized that even the psalmist said it in psalm one verse one there are three groups of people that you need to be careful of so i'm sure you are going to go there so let me just um hand you over to wrap it up for us as we bring the curtains down for today's oh, episode okay. uh, oh god it is, there's a lot to cover i mean if you regarding a uh, custom mm. fasting is one of them mm. you can to there's there's a level of service you you ha you can't do without fasting. Mm. See, depending on God's consecration upon your life, you must be able to fast consistently. Mm. And then um, the discipline of working in purity or having a pure heart and a pure life. Mm. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. There's a level of service you can offer, and God cannot express His power and grace through you if you don't walk in purity. Mm. You know, and um, uh, the Bible says we can ascend to the, the hills of the Lord, except the one who has a, a pure heart and a clean hands. That's right. So you have to maintain this posture. And then also having a custom of uh, constantly singing songs, adoration, spending time to give quality praise and worship to God. Mm. God deserves everything, everything when it comes to praise and worship, adoration, thanksgiving. So you must have a custom of sometimes midnight prayer, God, I will go up and just thank him. Intensely thank him. Because the, the greatest power in this kingdom is released on the account of intimacy. Mm. Man of God, you are married. There's something you know about your wife that the mother doesn't know. At all. Love opens us up to realms of knowledge and secrets that mm. others will not know. That's true. An intimate love mm. will open you up to dimensions of your partner that others will never discover. That's right. So, spending time to give God fellowship, creating that atmosphere of intimacy, worship, organic intimacy, trust me, releases the power of God upon you like never before. Mm. So, yeah, these disciplines are cardinal in our service to God, and it will keep you as a Christian youth to be effective for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. You remember my first statement, my, my opening statement. You cannot carry out the work of the spirit in the energy of the flesh. Mm. It will not work. It will just not work. Mm. You can't run or race with spirits. You'll be wary at the lifting of your foot. And so, uh, man of God, that is what I would say as a, a concluding point. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Apostle Seth P.K. Boateng. This session has been explosive. And like I told you, viewers, I've taken my part. I'm going to revisit my life of consistent prayer because it's not because apostle said it i can testify that if i develop that consistent prayer time with god anytime i get up to do it there is a cloud 
that um, envelopes me and bless your heart so much for allowing God to use you to speak to me this evening. And viewers, I'm sure that you've been equally blessed. I want to encourage you to subscribe, share these um, notifications that you get to as many people as possible. These are teachings that are very delicate in our days and it's not, it's not very easy to come by them. So when you get them, don't keep it under your bed. Share it with your family and friends. This is the Theophilus Lamte Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. Today with me has been Apostle Seth P.K. Boateng. He has a YouTube channel. You can find him as Seth P.K. Boateng. He does what I call the glimpse of glory. Amazing teachings on there. His link is in our description. When you click it, it will send you there. But make sure that when you go there, you subscribe. So that any time he loads or puts up new videos or new teachings, you'll get a notification and you'll follow. In our day and age, it's about learning. Knowledge is what will help us to avoid being destroyed by the enemy you don't want to take chances at all there are so many things that are out there that the devil is pioneering to choke or um daint our soul so that we will be, not be able to manifest and express the fullness of god in our life we just want to say thank you for spending time to stay with us today it's been fruitful it's been amazing thank you for all your um comments your suggestions your views and perspectives that you send us and those of you that are supporting us in diverse ways prayers um counseling advice Whichever way it is, we say may God bless and keep you. Um, we'll meet again next week. It's bye-bye for now, and we we'll see you again next week. Stay blessed.